hello let us say section 2.5 so here <coughs> basically we will see the state of stress in three dimension okay so this is like a prism basically a triangular prism so this is the area or you can say the oblique plane where the principal stress which is acting is the sigma right and the normal stresses are like sigma x tau xy tau xz sigma z tau zx tau zy sigma y tau yx and tau yz okay so these are the stresses which are acting okay now to find the principal stresses which are uh, in this case basically how we proceed is that now we assume that this is the principal stress is making some angle okay so let the angle be such that the direction cosine direction cosine with x axis so we take it as l okay with y we take it as m with z we take it as n right so this will be nothing but you can assume here like cos theta cos delta cos eta something like that okay so we have this sigma max this theta angle then here delta angle then here this eta angle right something like this to understand okay so now <coughs> the component of sigma in the x direction it will be sigma into l right the direction cosine component of sigma in y it will be sigma m and z it will be sigma n right this is fine okay now <coughs> if you see in the x axis okay so this is your x axis fine so we will try to balance the forces which are in the x axis then y axis then the z axis then from that we can calculate what is the principal stresses okay so in the x direction we have this force which is the component of this sigma and the area of this plane we have taken as a right now once we have taken area that is the j k l as a then area j o l j o l will be a n right because this is your a and this area this bottom one is perpendicular to this z so it will be basically a n then j o k so it will be a into this is perpendicular to y so l m n right so m and this next it will be k o l okay so k o l it will be a into l fine so in this x axis the forces let us try to balance so the first force it will be sigma into a into l right sigma into a into l okay then the next force it is see here that sigma x it is acting in this direction this is opposite so we can subtract it so sigma x and this is acting on this area k o l so what is the area of that it is equal to a into l right then the next force you can see here this tau z x is acting over here and this tau y x is acting so tau z x is acting so minus tau z x into what is this area j o l so it is a n right and similarly this tau y x is here so that will be and multiplied by area so it will be a into m right so this should be equal to 0 so this a a a will be cancelled so we can write here sigma minus sigma x to l then we can take this term tau y x m minus tau z x m into 0 right 
so this is the one equation in the x direction i have got from x direction so we will get similarly two more equation from y and z okay so you can do this calculation by yourself i am just writing okay so basically it will be like minus to x y l then here it will be plus then sigma minus sigma y m then here it will be minus to x z n it will be minus to z y okay then the next equation it will be minus to x z l minus to y z plus sigma minus sigma z okay then l m and n so you can do it so ultimately it will be in this form which is also given in your book Okay. where l m and n is also there okay okay so <clears throat> this l m n since it cannot be equal to 0 so this term has to be equal to 0 to find the principal stresses now if you do the calculation then it becomes in this form sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z into sigma square plus sigma x sigma y plus sigma y sigma z plus sigma x sigma z to x y whole square minus to y z whole square minus to x z whole square sigma then minus sigma x sigma y sigma z plus 2 times to x y y z x z minus sigma x to y z whole square minus sigma y to x z whole square minus sigma z to x y whole square so this become equal to 0 and these terms are basically the constant terms okay so that is why these are called as 3 invariant means it does not vary because this sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z will be equal to always will be equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 right the sum of major principal stresses is equal to the sum of normal stresses okay then this is your next this is called as i1 then your i2 will be equal to sigma x sigma y plus sigma y sigma z plus sigma x sigma z to x square y z square to x z then i3 will be equal to sigma x sigma y sigma z okay plus 2 times to x y y z x z sigma x to y z whole square sigma y to zx whole square sigma z to xy whole square ok so these are the three invariant terms which we get so if you solve 
this equation then from there we'll get the three values of sigma and that will correspond to uh, nothing but sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 right so the basic thing is that we need to convert any state of stress in this form right so that's why if you see the example also it is given in example the state of stress is like uh, if you see the example it is 0 minus 240 0 minus 240 200 0 0 0 minus 280 right so what we can do so we can add sigma so it will be sigma minus 0 sigma minus 200 then sigma plus 280 right so minus 240 0 0 minus 240 0 0 then do the calculation everything and from there we can find okay this is it which is given then the next concept is that now in the next concept it is given that uh, how we can find that what is the uh, plane where the maximum shear stress acts so basically the maximum shear stress which acts in the case of 2d we have seen that it is between the two plane and such that it makes an angle of 45 degree okay it, it makes an angle of 45 degree between them like this is the stress so this is your sigma x then sigma y then this is the plane where the maximum shear stress will act okay so similarly here it is given in the diagram that now suppose you have your cube right okay now let us see for this sigma 1 and this sigma 2 right so the plane should be such that it is like a should make an angle of something like this okay then something like this okay so you can see this is your sigma 1 and sigma 2 so it is in the middle of that so if you try to calculate the angle so it will be nothing but 45 degree okay with one axis so similarly this is for sigma 1 and sigma 2 now if someone wants to draw for sigma 2 and sigma 3 okay so sigma 1 is over here sigma 2 is over here then sigma 3 is over here right so between that so that means will be it will be something like this okay. now for this sigma 2 and sigma 3 so we can draw like this So we have sigma 1, sigma 2 and 3, then sigma 1 and 3, we want to make sigma 1 and this will be sigma 3, right? So it will be something like this okay so that's what it is given in the book also and it has tried to explain okay so don't go much in the calculation because that is not very relevant to your gate okay and the maximum shear stress if you calculate then it is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 where sigma 1 is your maximum 
then sigma 3 is the minimum value of the principal stress right so that concept is there and this gives the maximum shear stress okay so hope this will be helpful okay so thank you all